Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Marantz and the model number is PM and it's the 7200. In terms of general specifications, power output in class AB mode is 95 watts per channel, RMS and that's 2 times 8 ohm speakers. If you select class A mode, this reduces down to 25 watts RMS and again 2 times 8 ohm speakers. On the front fascia you have the ability to select between system 1 and system 2 and this refers to your connected speakers. So you can have two sets on simultaneously or individual sets. You can also bypass the tone control circuits by selecting the source direct mode and then frequency response is 20 Hz to 20 kHz and total harmonic distortion is 0.03% and then input sensitivity if you connect the turntable with a moving magnet type cartridge is 2.5 millivolts and then for all of your other line inputs it's 150 millivolts. And then dimensions is 440 by 159 by 275.4. It is a heavy amplifier coming in at 12.3 kilograms. Now from new the amplifier was also provided with a remote control. Now when we take a look at the top of the amplifier with the cover removed. What you can see here is that this amplifier has a lot of dust inside. But at some point in time I believe it probably was stored maybe in a humid environment or maybe a damp environment. Meaning it could have been stored in an attic for example. And that adds additional time and work that you need to do on the amplifier when you come to repair it. But we'll get into that as we move through this repair tutorial. The first thing that I want to bring to your attention, and for people who are new to the channel or maybe people who are following the channel, what I always say is that it's very important to provide additional information because you may be undertaking the repairs yourselves or you may be just viewing this and just learning from what you see. What I've done here is I've put an arrow which indicates one of the screw holes and the reason why I'm doing that is that this amplifier, like many of the Rance amplifiers, has a common ground. So the reason why there's no paint there is that when you insert the screw, it will connect to a common ground point via the speaker terminals on the rear. Then, in turn with the other screws, grounds the overall chassis. Now it's very, very important that if you are making a repair on the amplifier, and then you come to test it, that you need to put the back panel on and make sure that these grounding screws on the speaker terminals and maybe two or three on the main chassis ground screws are connected. That just ensures that when you're in test mode that there's nothing going to be an issue or you're not going to cause problems because you don't have the common ground point. The other thing to be aware of, and again I'm not highlighting it here, is that many amplifiers you have links on the rear. Now what you can do is you can use the power amplifier stage separate to the preamplifier if you wish. Or, if you have the links inserted, then of course it will connect the pre-amplifier stage of the integrated amplifier to the power output stage. But it's useful in terms of fault finding, maybe you add noise on a particular channel. By isolating the preamp and the power amp by removing the links, it just makes fault finding a lot easier. Now, with these amplifiers, there's a very, very common issue, and this is across many, many amplifiers manufactured by Marantz. Now, dry joints form or bad solder joints form across many of the components and that is the number one issue with all of these amplifiers. So when this amplifier was first tested and again the customer had already contacted me it was via the YouTube channel he would said that for example that there was bad audio on one of the channels it was very very noisy crackling and poor operation. Now what you have to do in all cases when you have these types of issues is you've got to take the amplifier back to a position where if you needed to you can then do additional fault finding. If you have re-soldered all of the circuit boards because you know that this is a very common issue with dry solder joints then you know that you have a base position. Now in most cases for this series of amplifier you will fix the issue. There's additional work that you see but overall doing all of the dry solder joints really eliminates all of those issues associated with the problems that you see. So what I'm showing you in this photograph is the input stage of the amplifier. So the red components are the input selection relays. Now this amplifier doesn't, for example, use a mechanical switch to do that. What will happen is as you select the different inputs, there is a switch, let's use the word encoder, which is then read via the microprocessor. And then in turn, it will select the appropriate relay that you see on this circuit board. Now what I'm showing here is one of the circuit boards, and this is a smaller board. And what I've done is I've lifted it up and I've turned it over and then I've put a circle around all of the different solder connections on the RCA input sockets. So this is your first point of call. You have to solder all of those connections. And then here what you can see is the larger board. 
and then to the left hand side again I've highlighted sockets and there's always cracks around the solder joints and as you scan around you'll see minute cracks around many of the resistors and capacitors and also the interconnectors as well. Now once you've done that you're then able to move on to the main amplifier. Now the amplifier is very very easy to remove from the chassis so you only have a total of eight fixing screws and then you can just disconnect it and then put the main chassis with the power supply and the input selection stage and your tone circuits to one side pop it on the bench and then it's very easy to work on it now when you look at this circuit board here there's a number of things that i want to just draw to your attention so left and right you can see the large metal heat sinks and this ensures that the power output transistors are operating at the correct temperature now the white components left and right which seem to be standing up vertically these are the emitter resistors and then towards the rear of the amplifier two black components which are standing up these are the speaker protection relays. Now you will need to replace them because the contacts become oxidized and worn and then you will have issues with distortion at low volume or intermittent loss of sound. Now when I looked at this amplifier what was evident is that there was some degree of mold so again coming back to the point that I believe that it had been in a damp environment. Now that's not a major issue. You didn't have for example some of the solder tracks had come away from the board. But it did require that this whole board was then cleaned with alcohol. Just to remove any of that mould. And then I had to take the time of course to do all of the resoldering. And you will find that this board is extensive with dry solder joints. What I would also say as well is just be very careful. Some of the components stand up vertically on the other side of the board and what you don't want to do is maybe put excess pressure onto there because some of these solder tracks are very very thin and it would be easy for some of those just to break away and maybe you don't notice it. So again you just got to take your time. And then on the left and the right hand side what you can see there are the power output transistors. Now if we now come back to this board here and you can see that I put an arrow this is the protection board. Now on this protection board there is a dedicated protection IC. This is what you see on the right hand side and then your associated components. Now if we flip over the circuit board what you'll now see is that I'm highlighting the key areas where there are dry solder joints and there will be dry solder joints on the dedicated protection IC and then also the plug-in connector as well and some of the resistors on that board. Now the next thing that I focus on is the large power supply. So here you can see a top shot of the power supply board and there's a number of things that we need to look at. The first one is if you look towards the right hand side you can see the mechanical on off switch and then the two large canisters are the electrolytic smoothing capacitors and then just to the front of that you can see the large bridge rectifier and then to the left of that there's actually a relay and I'll come back to that in a little while. Why that is important is because this amplifier can run in class A mode Normally when it's running in class AB mode, the voltage to the power output stage of the amplifier is 56 volts. When you run in class A mode, this relay will operate and then the output stage being driven in class A mode will drop down to 26 volts. Now it's important that you do really need to clean the switching contacts or if they were severely worn, then you would replace. And it's a common relay. It's a 24 volt DC coil. So the first thing that I'm doing is once I've removed the circuit board, again, we're talking about bad solder connections. So I just work my way across the board and I'll reflow those connections there. And you'll find multiple areas where you need to do the resoldering. And then here what I've done is I've removed from the circuit board the relay which is associated with the power supply voltage switching for the class A mode. And just to the right, what I could see is oxidization on the switching contacts. Now that's not unusual, you know, you've got to appreciate that this amplifier is decades old and it's probably been used extensively. Now what you don't want to do is to get maybe some sandpaper or a file and then start, you know, sanding away at those contacts. That's the last thing you want to do. Now there wasn't any pitting on the switching contacts, it was just purely oxidisation. So all that I take is a fiberglass pencil and I'll lightly brush across it just to remove it and then I'll then clean the contacts also with deoxid. D5 and then of course put the relay back into the circuit board. Now once that has been done the thing that I need to look at now is the alignment of the amplifier. Now before I did that what I also looked at was the tone control circuits 
and then also the headphone socket and what i'm looking for is again any dry solder joints and you'll have a low voltage power supply which is used to run the tone control circuits and again it's very easy just to remove the board and then lift it up and then do the necessary work so here what we're looking at is an extract from the service manual and what i'm showing you is different adjustments that you need to make the first one as you can see is the dc offset adjustment there's then the bias adjustment when it's operating in class a b mode and then the adjustment when you are selecting class a so for the dc offset adjustment and again we'll show this later on one of the photographs what you would need to do is from the front fascia select speaker set one or speaker set two or both and make sure that you connect your multimeter across the left hand speaker terminals and what you're looking to do is really to get it as close to zero millivolts as you possibly can but if you get it within plus or minus five millivolts typically that would be fine and then of course you would then repeat that for the other channel so here what we're showing you is the adjustment with regard to the amplifier when it's operating in class a b mode and you can see that the millivolts is 17.86 millivolts so it didn't require any adjustment to be made and that was the same also for the other channel but here when we look at the other channel you can see that the millivoltage range is 16.56 millivolts so again no adjustment had to be made but when we selected class a mode this should be normally 90 millivolts and you can see here it's actually 165 millivolts and what you found was you can actually hear the power transformer because there was excess current which has been drawn through the output stage of the amplifier so what you have to do is to, of course to adjust the preset and then here we get it down to 90.12 now as soon as that adjustment was made you actually noted that there was a distinct change in the humming sound that was coming for the transformer because it wasn't having excess current being drawn and then here what we're showing you again is the other channel and now this is 88.09 millivolts so within the tolerance for the class a mode and then what i'm showing here is the dc offset adjustment so you can see it's very low so it's only 2.29 millivolts so extremely low so there was no adjustment to be made on that channel and then here when we look from the top you can see that this is the amplifier with all of the work completed so you can see that it's had a thorough clean so normally use a compressed airline and a long stiff brush to get any residue from there and then as we said all solder connections have been re-soldered and just to the rear the speaker protection relays have been removed and been replaced with high quality relays and then also as well the user controls on the front so these are the potentiometers which would be for your base treble and balance controls all of those have also been cleaned and then the amplifier goes on to an extensive test so normally it runs for about three to four hours and the amplifier performed perfectly and what i would say is that the audio quality of this amplifier is very very good indeed so i can understand why the owner of this amplifier you know was interested to have it restored back to its former glory and i can also understand why people would actively go out there and source these amplifiers the point to note, and I've said this on many tutorials, is it's very important to carry out, as I said earlier, all of this additional work. You need to build longevity into the repair. A lot of these issues are age related. Here you can see that we have the speaker protection relays have been removed. So it's just a common 24 volts, what we term as double pole changeover relay. So readily available, no issue then to go source them and then here what we're showing you is just the amplifier during its test phase and really from my point of view as an engineer working on these amplifiers it is a joy because you take it where you have the issues and then the faults and then literally to strip that amplifier down to make sure that everything is exactly as it should and then you get to the alignment stage and final test phase it's a nice sense of achievement and then you know that when the amplifier is received back by the customer they're going to have many many years of listening quality so i really appreciate you stopping by as always and again if you have any questions or you need any help assistance or guidance by all means email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com cheers and bye-bye